Hi guys. Um, my name is Maggie Lorenz and I am, I was asked by Travis to create a little video about, um, how people can incorporate more traditional foods into their diet and different recipes and things like that. So I am going to do a couple of different little like videos, I guess, or, um, recipes, uh, to help you guys figure out a couple of different things. One, um, rose hips, because it's the season right now to pick rose hips. Um, two, I'm going to t show you guys and talk a little bit about how to harvest cedar and how you can make cedar tea. And then three, uh, I'm gonna show you guys how to make wasna, which is uh, kind of like, um, people may call it pemmican or something like that, but it's like dried meat, dried, berries particularly choke cherries and fat and then you kind of mix that up and that's a, a traditional like kind of survival food um so anyways i'm gonna uh show folks how to make those three things but first um i want to uh introduce myself a little bit more and tell you about who i am so um my relatives, my name is, uh, like I said, Maggie Lorenz. I am the executive director for a group called Lower Failing Creek Project. And we are an environmental conservation nonprofit on the east side. We're native led. And we do a lot of different projects like um, restoring native habitat and restoring and like adding native plants to like some of the parks and green spaces on the east side of St. Paul. So I think there's like a big kind of like resurgence of people using native plants to, you know, um, decorate their yards or whatever. And even in parks, there's becoming more of a resurgence of um, parkland, you know, using and utilizing native plants because they, for a, a few different reasons, um, one, it supports our, our native pollinators and our native um, animals and wildlife. Um, obviously the plants that or the the animals that are indigenous to this place are um, designed and adapted to um, be able to eat these native plant foods um, better. Their bodies, um, you know, it's more nut nutritious for them and gives them more of what they need. So that's one reason. Another reason that people are going back to native plants um, rather than you know, exotic ornamentals and things like that is because it they require less work. They require less water. A lot of native plants are really drought tolerant and um, and require very little work and maintenance. Um, and they're beautiful. So, um, but the great thing about that is the more that there's um, native plant restorations, native prairies, native um, woodland plants, and trees that are being restored in our local parks and green spaces, the more opportunities that we have as native people to harvest some of our traditional medicines and traditional foods. So today I'm at Indian Mounds Regional Park and I'm going to um, show you guys how to harvest rose hips. Um, there's this big area here. Um, I don't know if I can like flip my camera around, but let's see, maybe I can just show you guys. It's kind of hard to see, but there's like this big, um, like prairie restoration area. That's like right when you're coming from like 94 and you're going up Mounds Boulevard towards the park. It's like right before you get to the park in that big brick pavilion, there's this whole native plant restoration area. And that's where there's this huge patch of um, wild roses, native roses. And what happens is if you don't, um, you know, clip off the roses, uh, which a lot of people do in their yards. They want to clip them for, um, you know, having in vases or whatever in their houses. But if you don't clip off the roses, then they turn into these little buds and that's edible. And um, rose petals are also edible, but I'm just going to focus on the hips today. So um, the little buds are called rose hips and um they're really high in vitamin C. They're um, great to make jams and jellies and all kinds of different things, but today we're just gonna try to do a simple rose hip tea. So I'm gonna show you guys how to do that. And first I'm gonna show you guys what rose hips look like and how to harvest them. So one second, I'm gonna do that now. Oh, and one more thing before we do that. Totally forgot about this part. Before you go out and harvest anything, there's a few things that you're probably gonna need. First and most importantly is some tobacco. So you wanna, put down some tobacco and say a prayer 
um, and um, thanks for that medicine and ask that that medicine will help whatever you're trying, especially if you're using it for medicinal purposes, that it will help to do those things for yourself or whoever you're harvesting those medicines for. So make sure to bring your tobacco and put that down. Um, sometimes I'll bring like a hand um, clippers. For rose hips, you really don't need this, but like, especially if you're going out to get tanshasha or like later when I go get some um, cedar, I'll use my little hand shears and you can just get those at Target, maybe like five or $10, I don't know. And then you want just a little, a little like bag or something to put them in. So I'm gonna use those things. And so yeah, let's go harvest some rose hips. Okay, so as you guys can see, kind of walking down Mounds Boulevard right here, and this is the Plain of Restoration area. And now you're kind of seeing this boulevard as we come through here. So these are rose hips. And so they're on this rose plant. I don't know if you can see that. It's, you know, a rose plant. It has all these little thorns on it. And then these little red berries. Let's see if I can get it to focus on them. Are the rose hips. So you want to harvest them when they are red or orange. And definitely before they you know, go bad. Like this one right here is kind of icky. Let's see if you can see that. So like this, these ones are in pretty good shape right here. So I think I'm going to harvest some of these. pluck them off. I'm going to grab some of these here. As you can see, there's a lot. Ooh, my camera is really bad. As you can see, there's a lot. So I'm going to do some harvesting. It's really windy and cold out here. And then um, I'll bring you guys, uh, we're going to go back to my house and I will show you how to harvest or how to process them once they're harvested. Okay guys, I got my rose hips and now I am here at an undisclosed location on the east side of St. Paul. And I'm in an empty lot, which happens to have this incredibly gorgeous um, flat cedar uh, tree. And so, um, again, um, before you harvest anything, you want to make sure you put down your tobacco. But, um, but here's what a flat cedar tree looks like. Um, as you can see, it has all of these, these little... Uh, these little, where am I? Oh, here. These little tiny baby pine cones on it that are super cute. And the, the leaves are just like really delicate feeling and looking. They're very, um, they're very flat and thin. And um, so there's another kind of cedar called, um, this, this cedar is called white cedar. Um, that's the kind of preferred cedar that we would want to use for our things, but um, there's another kind of cedar called red cedar. The leaves are less flat, I guess. They're still kind of flat, you know, but they're like less thin and they're more like bumpy and bulky. So um, that's okay to use as well, but this is the preferred, the preferred is this um, flat, really, really flat cedar. It's called white cedar. I think it's called like Tuha Odsindolentis or something. I don't know. I don't know the Latin name. So anyways, I'm gonna put some tobacco down. I'm gonna grab some cedar, just enough to make a pot of tea and then um, next we'll be back at my house so that I can show you guys how to do it. All right, so I'm back home and here is my harvest of cedar. And this is just, um, you know, I just clipped, use my little pruners and just clipped off, you know, just what you need. That's all you want to harvest. It's just what you need. And so I didn't take too much. Um, I only grabbed again, just what I needed for this video. Um, in this case was, um, this amount of berries, um, or rose hips. So, um, and then because my husband and I, we had gone out, this is, these are all dry, but we had gone out, um, a while back and gathered these rose hips, but we didn't, um, we didn't cut these open and take the seeds out. So these ones are really just good for tea. You can't eat these because they have the seeds inside. So you can use these rose hips for um, eating. 
And so I think like some people will use the rose hips to like how you would use like dried cranberries or something. Um, you can just use them to eat on their own or to put in like muffins or whatever. Um, but um, I just wanted to get this many so that we can make some fresh rose hip tea so I can show you guys how to do that. And then um, also so that I could show you the inside, which is when you cut it, cut it open, kind of looks like this. And you can see all of these seeds have like these little fuzzy little seeds. They have like hair on them. You can kind of see that. I don't know, you can kind of see the hair that's still on my fingers a little bit, but they're, the seeds are very kind of fuzzy. So all of those little hairs will cause you like extreme intestinal discomfort and especially when they're coming out the other end if you know what i'm saying so you really want to get all of those seeds out before you um use them if you're going to make tea like i said is what we're going to do with these dried ones um then you don't need to do that because you'll just put the whole berries in there and then you're going to strain it before you drink it anyways um, but again if you're going to eat them Definitely do not want to eat those little hairy seeds on the inside there. That will really, really bother your stomach. So um, I am going to, let's see, how can I do this? I I'm going to figure out a way. Oh, maybe I'll ask Zona if she can hold this. Hey, Zona. <laughs> Hi. This is my Zona. She's six years old. Zona, will you do me a favor? Mm -hmm. Can you just hold the camera and point it where mommy's working so that people can see? how I take out the little seeds from here. Yeah. Okay, so make sure that people can see this, okay? Yeah. So basically you just wanna scoop these seeds out and you can use like a little knife or a little spoon or whatever, but just take those seeds out and then you really just want this. Shut up, Jenny. This flesh here. Um, that, that's what you want, just that little, and then you can take, once you get them like that, then you can take them, you can, um, rinse them, dry them, uh, if you dry these, um, you want to dry them at about 110 degrees, so your, usually your, um, stove won't get that low in temperature, it usually only goes down to about 170 so you probably want to use a dehydrator to dry them or you can just leave them like we have with these. Leave them in like a basket or a paper bag um, in a cool, dark, not humid spot so that they can um, dry out. So I'm going to go ahead and get all the seeds out of these. I'll show you what it looks like in a minute and then we'll make some tea. All right, so here are about eight rose hips that I have cleaned all of the berry or all of the um, seeds out and I just kept this fleshy part. And so I'm just gonna use my little cup that my daughter got me. It's a little like tea strainer cup. And so I'm just gonna put these fresh um, hips, rose hips in there. And then just add some boiling water. And that is how you make fresh rose hip tea. So that I'll let that steep for maybe like, I don't know, five, 10 minutes or so. And so while I'm letting that steep, I'm gonna come over here and work with this cedar. So let's see. Hmm. Let's see if I can find a way to prop this up so that you guys can see what I'm doing. Let's see if this is gonna work. I don't know, does that work? Sorry guys, I'm so low tech. This is bad. Um, okay, so basically you take your cedar like this and all I do is I'll just take like one of the little branches and I'll just kind of push it up and then, so you have the bare, so then you'll have the bare stem and then you'll have your cedar leaves. And that is how I um, 
clean or I don't know, prepare, however you wanna say it, process my cedar. So I just take a branch, a little twig, I guess, of cedar. I just squeeze it up along the stem and then the stem is clean and then you have your cedar, cedar leaves. So I'm gonna do that now. Okay, so now I am done cleaning my, or separating my cedar leaves from the branches or the twigs. So as you can see, these are pretty clean. And now you have this um, nice fresh batch of cedar leaves. Um, and I'm gonna make a pot of cedar tea. And so I have a three quart pot and I'm probably just gonna use you know, like a handful, I guess, like maybe half of what I got here, I'll put in the pot. Um, I don't know, like this much. So just a nice handful. And go over here to my pot, this is my three quart pot. And I just, just got it started. So you just honestly put the, um, the leaves in there and then you let it boil. Um, I bring it, I usually bring it to like a hard boil and let it boil for like a minute. And then I turn it on low for like maybe 10 minutes. Um, and that's it. And then once you're done, um, brewing the cedar tea, you can use maple syrup or honey to sweeten it. Um, pretty good that way. Or you can just... Um, drink it plain it's really good on its own too so you can see you don't need like a ton ton of cedar leaves uh, to brew the tea but you want a good amount or enough in there to really um, extract that medicine out and you know they say not to drink more than like four cups of cedar tea every week because the volatile oils in here will uh, again, give you some like GI distress if you drink too much of it. Um, but then again, like if you're if you're sick, like you definitely want to be drinking this if you're feeling like you're getting a cold. But just drinking cedar tea a couple of cups a week throughout the winter, this is going to really help keep you healthy, um, as well as the rose hips because of the high amounts of vitamin C and other like medicinals that are in there. So I'm gonna let these couple of things um, continue to brew and then I'll show you guys um, the tea when we're done. Okay, so tea is done. So this is the rosehip tea. And you know, you can see that it's not like, the color of the water didn't really change too much. So you just, this is how this little cup works. You kind of put it on top of, this and it just drains into the cup but you can see it's kind of a rose color kind of a rosy color in there so that's the rose hip tea and then I'm gonna bring over this cedar tea here so um hmm maybe I'll just put a cup because usually I have somebody like Pour it over but you can see it's kind of like greenish colored greenish yellowish colored so you just want to strain it I mean and then that's the tea the cedar tea so again these are really medicinal really healthy and really good you can sweeten them with honey or maple syrup or you can just drink them on their own um, I forgot to also say any time that you have medicines like this that you're drying so this is fresh cedar that I didn't use in the pot so I'm gonna put that in a brown paper bag to dry so don't ever put it in plastic it'll get moldy in there this is some people might think this is um because it, it doesn't feel like moist but there's moisture in these leaves when they're fresh so if you put them in a plastic baggie they'll get all moldy in there so put those in a i'm gonna put those in a paper bag to dry and right now me and my daughter are gonna enjoy some rose hip and some cedar tea right maddie yeah okay next we're gonna make some wasna all right so now we're gonna make some wasna and 
Um, for Wasna, there are three main ingredients that you need. One is dried meat. In Dakota, it's called papa. Number two is choke cherry patties, which we harvested this year, this summer. They're usually ready around here in like July, towards the end of July. Um, that's a whole different process of how to explain that. So I'm just gonna say you, you harvest the choke cherries, you have to basically grind them up and like pound up the pits that are inside the cherries and then you grind it all together. You don't take the pits out. And then you make them into little patties, you dehydrate them and so, and then once you dehydrate them, you can store them in a cool, dry area or in the freezer. So you need the dried meat, the dried choke cherry patties, and then some kind of fat. Um, traditionally, maybe you would use um, kidney fat or tallow or like the bone marrow, but um, we don't have that. So I'm going to use Crisco. So anyways, um, this is a really high protein food. And I'm using, I got this little like thing one time years ago at like a powwow. There was like these little cards. They're from um, the Great Plains Good Health and Wellness Program in Rapid City. Anyways, this has like some information about wasna on it. And also like um, a little recipe for how to make wasna. So I'm going to like take a picture of this, put it in the video too, so that you guys can have that or see that. But basically, you know... Um, it says wasna derives from wa meaning anything and sna meaning ground up. So just any kind of food that's ground up, smashed up together. So that's what wasna means. And it contains of the dried things that I can already told you about. And you grind them together with a pounding stone. I, I know that some of my friends and relatives who learned how to make this when they were a lot younger, um, learn how to make it with like actual rocks and stuff but like I use um I use like a you know one of the like pestle and mortar but like the kind that you can get at like Mexican shops because they're like the texture of those little mortar and pestles is more like um, texturized I guess so it's easier to grind stuff up but it's basically a good source of protein it has protein fat and like those carbohydrates and all the nutrition in the choke cherries and um I recently read you know because people ask um to take the pits out because the pits they say you know like um if you read like uh any like regular American like article about choke cherries they'll say to remove the pits because they're toxic but for us we've always used the pits and so there was a research that was done by a, a Lakota a woman who was going to medical school in her like medical school program or whatever and she did some research about um you know um choke cherry juice using um juice from just the choke cherry flesh and then also juice from with the pits in it and then she tested them on cancer cells and the result was that um the juice that was made from the choke cherries with the pits killed cancer cells and the other ones didn't so um that didn't have the pits so it's really important medicine um we don't know like and science has western science hasn't caught up to um some of these um things that we use for medicine because they're just meant to be used in a whole kind of certain way as a whole medicine not as like um derivative or you know they all the parts of that plant work together so Anyways, that's why we grind it all up together. And um, anyways, um, so so this is, um, like I said, it's a, a survival food. People, you know, it's really lightweight and people would carry it with them when they would go on like long trips because you just have to eat, you know, a little bit a day to keep your body full, basically. Um, but it's lightweight and light to carry, but now it's a, a kind of important ceremonial food. So I'm gonna show you guys how to make it. Okay, so here are the ingredients we have for the wasna. This is dried meat or bapa. Um, this can be buffalo meat, deer meat, or um, you know, 
beef nowadays. And then these are the dried choke cherries and all these little white specks that you see in there are from the pits. So we're gonna use the dried meat and the dried choke cherry patties and some Crisco vegetable oil. I'm gonna put them here in my little grinder. Let's see. Kind of grind these up in here. And uh, let's see. I have down here hmm, a little thing that like pushes everything down. I should have grabbed this out of here. Anyways, um, oh yeah. This is my ugly uh, this is my ugly kitchen cabinet. Okay. So anywho, then you're just gonna want to take the I'm using a Vitamix, but you can use just any kind of blender. And uh, Let's see. Oh, there's all my dishes that Maddie didn't do yet. Okay. So, here we go. Then you just put this top on here. And turn your... Oh, I got to plug this in, huh? That'll probably help. Okay. Gee. Just really wasn't ready for this video. Okay. So, turn it on. And I'm gonna turn it on. Oh, okay, let's see. So I just kind of. You can see that it's getting kind of. ground up in here like really finely you want it to be really fine now this is just the meat and the choke cherry patties right now enough to kind of hold it together I guess so sorry I have to take the cap off the Crisco and oh thanks Maddie all right so then probably just gonna put I don't know a little bit not too much and I guess traditionally this would have probably been pounded all up together and like uh, with stone um, but we're using this this turned out pretty good this stuff comes out really um, really finely you want it really oops, finely smashed up so I think some people will use like um, beef jerky and dried cranberries if they're in like a rush or they don't have any um, dried dried bapa or choke cherries. They may use um, beef jerky that you buy from the store and dried cranberries, but you know, just try to keep some of this on hand because it's always good to have some. So, you know, you just take a little bit of it. See, it's just really kind of fine, but it just kind of can smash it together. So you just take a little pinch of it. Mm. 
Tastes pretty good. I'm gonna put a little bit more Crisco in there. I don't feel like it. it's quite holding together well enough. Um, some people, is that good, Maddie? Mm -hmm. Some people will also put a little bit of sugar in here to sweeten it up a little bit. What do you think, Mad Dog? Yeah. Should we put some sugar in? Mm -hmm. Okay, so I'm going to get a little bit of sugar. I'll just sweeten it up. And for this, we, I mean, I just use white sugar. Again, this is, you know, not, um, obviously it's not, um, super tradish because we didn't have white sugar back in the days, but man, it tastes really good with just a little bit of sugar in there. So that's how you do it. And I'm going to tell you what, if you guys learn how to make this, Learn how to make bapa, the dried meat. Learn how to harvest the choke cherries. Process them, make the patties, and make wasna, traditional wasna like this. Man, you'll be, you'll be the, what? The goat. What else do you say? You'll be the top dog, I don't know. You'll be like, everybody will love it. So that's how you make wasna. And I hope this video helped you guys learn something. And I'm going to eat some of this. And doksha.